Space Marine 2 has balls and it's something that we rarely see anymore. The gaming industry has absolutely seen some better days, from Mrs. Freeze being such a caricature of a gay person it's not even funny, to the Concord $400 million disaster for Sony, to all of the Ubisoft woes we get to see unfold right in front of our eyes. So many development studios are looking for this mythical modern audience that doesn't seem to actually exist. Battle passes and FOMO are now the modus operandi and you don't even get to complete games anymore because you never get a finished product. Being a regular guy who has been gaming for pretty much all of my life, there is one Asmongold clip which encapsulates everything I feel about the current gaming industry. I forgot what it was like to be the target audience. With all of this in mind, let me take you back to the simpler days of the late 2000s and early 2010s. We're safe. Back in those olden times when YouTube was just a cat video website and electricity was just being discovered, you couldn't get your gaming news from your friendly neighborhood YouTuber. Instead, you would go to a website like Game Trailers. If you were a person without a lot of monetary capabilities and games were expensive for you, these sites were your only way of knowing which games are actually worth it for you to try out. And if you were in a part of the world like, let's say, Eastern Europe, maybe you would consider going YAR for that game. That's got to be the best part I've ever seen. So it would seem. And I still distinctly remember as if it were yesterday, the year 2007, which was deemed the best year for gaming in the past several decades. And just to prove a point, here's a list of a couple of games that came out in 2007. Portal, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, Halo 3, World of Warcraft, The Burning Crusade, Rock Band, Super Mario Galaxy, the original Bioshock, the original Assassin's Creed, Uncharted, Crisis, and Mass Effect. Each and every single one of those entries is considered to be a modern masterpiece and is universally praised and has either started a franchise or created a new way for you to play games that we are still feeling the effects of even to this day. You might not believe me, but in that era, Xbox was on top of the console wars and the Xbox 360 was THE console if you wanted to be a hardcore gamer. And after a lot of pleading, at the end of 2008, as a Christmas gift, my father gave me probably the best thing he ever gave me, which was the Xbox 360, packaged with the masterpiece Gears of War 2. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I beat that in a day. I didn't eat, I didn't sleep, I was cooked by the end, but it was so satisfying. The campaign was a simple experience that would take 6-10 to 10 hours to complete with a story that was not overly dramatic or overly complicated. It featured, and I'm willing to fight about this with absolutely anybody, the tightest cover shooter mechanics we've ever gotten to experience in a video game, some very creative weapons, great execution animations, and just action-packed, adrenaline-filled gameplay. It had on-rail sections which were actually incredible and action set pieces which were brimming with so much testosterone you would feel the hair growing on your chest. And something which would probably blow the mind of any Wokey on Twitter, the cast of characters was incredibly diverse. It didn't feature only white male characters. Not only that, but the most impactful story pieces actually came from a character named Dominic, who, as you might guess by the name, is not your typical straight white guy. You had characters like Coltrane who were absolute beasts and machines. Nobody plays this game like me. Nobody. And guess what? Nobody cared about their identity. We were simply enjoying a story of badass space marines killing aliens, fighting for family and brotherhood. If the game was made today, most likely it would end up looking like a South Park episode and to be completely honest, gamers are much smarter than you give us credit for and we can definitely feel when something is disingenuous and is not coming from the right place. 99% of gamers never really cared about a character's identity, which is why the entire world can say I am Goku. Giving us a character who is overly focused on their identity and emotions is not something that most regular gamers want to see. Instead, we are interested in good stories, which is why Dominic's story worked on so many levels. And honestly, I almost cried a little at the end. Maria. I'm so sorry, Maria. I tried to find you. God, God I, I did. Marcus, I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, man. She... No. It's okay. I love you so much.
it was the era of the box game. If you're not familiar with this term, it pretty much means that you get a complete and finished product once you purchase your game, since there were no day one patches or battle passes or any extra content to be had. If you wanted extra content, you would have to purchase an expansion pack. Most games would follow a very similar structure. You would get a campaign which lasts anywhere from 6 to 12 hours with various difficulty levels and a PvP game mode. That was pretty much it. Any special titles, achievements or cosmetics were locked. Imagine this, not behind the paywall, but behind actual gameplay experience. <laughs> That's so silly. I w Imagine that. Games also used to have a feature which I sorely miss and you will probably never get to experience if you don't play an old game and it was quote unquote cheats. In you were able to unlock big head mode. In GTA San Andreas, you were able to, well, pretty much become a god. A lot of games would give you incredibly overpowered weapons just for beating the game at the highest difficulty setting. Developers were well aware that they couldn't just patch out bugs from their games, so they had to make sure the shipped product is pretty much as perfect as it can get. And what I miss most, games had a beginning, middle, and an end, which means that you get to complete a game and move on to another. And this is finally where we turn back back around to Space Marine 2 and all of the reasons why it's such a massive success. Whether you get to see it or not, Titus's story is obviously a labor of love from all of the developers in Saber Interactive. They clearly not only understand the source material, but deeply cherish it and this is something that you get to feel while you're in the game. Space Marine 2 doesn't feature any characters who are put in there just for the diversity points and it's clearly visible. It has a diverse cast of characters, but there's zero focus placed on their identity. Instead of giving us a female Space Marine, which would give them diversity points, but go against the lore, they give us a female commander of the Astro Militarum. Hold your feet, soldier! Move to defend our west flank! The main cast is diverse but not overly emotional and when one of the characters does get in his feelings, he gets quickly reprimanded by Titus. Explain yourself. Need I justify my hatred? You need justify your recklessness. They are the peak of the Imperium military and Titus embodies this fact perfectly. He knows he is on a mission and he knows what he needs to do to complete it. I've spoken with a couple of friends who are deep in the lore and they play the tabletop game and they've told me that Space Marine 2 is so lore accurate that it's actually impressive. The developers even took the time to set up the armies that you see only in cutscenes and in the background to be as accurate as possible to the tabletop game in terms of how many points each unit is worth. Turns out the developers snuck in another 2000 point army towards the end of the game. There are various details that only get noticed by the quote-unquote lore nerds that just prove that Saber Interactive did their best to make sure we all see the love that has been put into this project. Is that an Emperor class Titan? It's massive! I guess what I'm trying to say is that this game feels genuine and that's a feeling that's sorely lacking from most modern day titles. Everything that has a gameplay impact is absolutely free after you purchase the base game. If you wanted a skin, you had to play for it. If you wanted a gun, you had to play for it. While Space Marine 2 does have some paid cosmetics, that's the only thing you can pay for. And in today's landscape, I and I would assume many others paid and will continue paying for the seasons, not because we care about the skins that much, but because we want to buy into a product that we enjoy. Take a look at Destiny 2's cash shop. It's filled to the brim with content that you should honestly get in the game for free for doing some impressive achievements, but no, I guess you need to pay out your butt for it. A lot of the items in the Eververse should honestly be granted to players who do some impressive achievements in the game, like for example soloing a dungeon or something of the sort. Instead of making these cosmetics items that you unlock during in-game events, like for example Destiny's version of the Olympics, they are just items that you can purchase and most likely forget about in a week. And now let's contrast this with Space Marine 2's customization, which offers you armor parts which are effectively skins for your character. How do you unlock those? Completing a set amount of PvE co-op operations or PvP matches will count towards unlocking various armor parts for your character of choice. Weapons and weapon skins act pretty much the same way, they have an experience system where you need to play a certain amount of games with this dedicated weapon in order to unlock its next tier. And with every tier, a new set of skins comes for that weapon. This is a very easy to pick up and understand system that harkens back to a simpler time that a lot of us miss. I decided to leave this for the end since I believe it will hammer a point home, but basically, gameplay is king.
It doesn't matter how good your story is and it doesn't matter how few things you are selling in your store. If the gameplay is boring, then no one is going to get to experience your game. And thankfully, Space Marine 2's gameplay is pretty incredible. A lot of game studios nowadays seem to fall into this Ubisoft BS trap of make an open world game, fill it up with a bunch of side objectives and pray that the player is invested enough to go through them. And let's be honest, if your main gameplay loop is boring as shit, nobody is gonna care about your freaking side quests. Games like the ones that we used to get, like Gears of War 2, freaking The Witcher 3 and now Space Marine 2 have punch and they have impact. When you're doing something, it feels cool. Since the game is themed around the most badass space soldiers possible, make me feel like I'm a badass space soldier. Give me thousands of enemies on screen to defeat, give me a freaking chainsword and let me rip and tear. And thankfully, this is what SM2 does. Here, sometimes you get a primary weapon, you get a secondary weapon, sometimes you get a melee weapon, you have a parry button and one ability per class, and that's it. The gameplay here is not overly complicated. Shoot, slash, parry, counter attack, and that's pretty much it. Get surrounded and make sure you stay alive. And in a game about badass space marines, that's the only thing you need. A lot of times playing SM2 kind of feels like this clip. Because my life is dope and I do dope. <laughs> The executions are glorious, most of the weapons feel pretty fun to shoot and even though it only has 6 PvE missions, at least for me, I never get tired of them. And that is because the main gameplay loop, aka the thing you do most in the game, is simplistic and very fun to actually do. Nothing is as cool as you just grabbing a gun by his head and squishing it like a tiny little watermelon. In the PvP, oh my god, don't get me started on the PvP. It's Gears of War 2, but in 2024, and it's freaking unbelievable. You get one ability, you get your weapons, and that's about it. There's no skills that you can unlock lock there's no passives i don't get a higher aim assist cone because my weapon is level 18 and your weapon is level one this just doesn't happen it's all fair and well it's not all the way balanced but at least you never feel cheated out of your life and you know what i know that there's a newer generation of gamer who has grown up with battle passes in every game they want patches and things just it is what it is for them but this isn't what it used to be i would like for us to get back to games being a complete and finished product space marine 2 has balls and that's what the gaming industry has missed for a very long time thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video make sure you hit the like and subscribe to my channel for even more gaming content and i'll see you in the next one